Hi, this is Chad Collar from Subsea Imaging, and I'm here to present Scripting in the Subsea, using scripting to reduce autonomous system complexity and cost. Question one, what is scripting? We'll give a live demonstration. And question two, what are the benefits? And we'll give some real world uh, examples. So first, what is scripting? Uh, scripting is a simple software language that, uh, in the case of our cameras, uh, and the examples we'll show here, allow the solution to run autonomously. Scripting uses our open source API, which is available online, uh, and it runs in the camera. The camera is an embedded system. The user, yourself, writes the scripts referencing our API to complete the required functionality. We've created examples of scripts and can help with very advanced applications by writing the scripts ourselves. The API has conditional statements that allow the user um, to execute commands based on inputs uh, from variables such as external sensors. External sensors I'll give a few examples of now in a second. Uh, you can also use the built-in real-time clock or the system time inputs can be utilized as well. Many sensors can interact with the camera. The data is logged and can be utilized for scripting in real time. We are developing new features and releasing software updates on a quarterly basis to clients based on direct feedback. Examples of sensors that can be logged include depth, heading, tilt, roll, altimeter, CTD, and of course, system time. The API allows the user to control external sensors directly. The aux ports of our cameras interact with components via RS-45 and TTL signals. Here you can see a camera with one white LED, a red LED, and a line laser. The cameras strobe the LEDs in sync with the sensor exposure time. There are a number of options for different lasers, from line, grid, and parallel points for distance and size reference. Lasers are often used in machine vision applications. And now I'll give a brief product demonstration. You can see our software that contains many of the common functions that are required to use a camera. All of these functions are also accessible to the API. So you've got file naming conventions, directory structures, quality encoding settings for video recording. You've also got digital still settings for file naming, etc., as well as uh, image formats and continuous rate. You've got white balance controls. So if you have too much green in the water column, you can remove that. You've also got laser and LED controls. So I'll turn on my laser and I'll turn on my lamp. If I'm in auto exposure, as I turn on my laser or my lamp, you'll see that the ISO will change automatically, of course. You can also manually adjust these functions and the API obviously can do that as well. You can adjust strobe compensation and what that is is a function to uh, allow you to frame the image and take a photo at the same time. And you've got focus controls. So in auto, you can also have manual and auto focus. All of these functions are uh, in the software, but not burned into the video. You also got your heading, tilt, and roll. And when you have a depth sensor, the depth will show up right here. So if I record some video, all of these sensor data are coming in and getting recorded as CSV, not burned in. You've got zoom control and pen tilt. Some other settings that are important for scripting are date and time. So you've got local time on the camera, system time, and you also have NTP server synchronization. So if you're online, you can access an online NTP server. Most of our customers will not have an online access on board a vessel, so you can also have a server aboard the vessel. You have uh, aux device, so aux ports are 
ports on the back of the camera that the camera controls automatically directly via RS-45 and TTL. So we've got a, an LED and a laser connected. You can also have pan and tilts. And we are uh, adding new devices based on customer request. You can see all of the API interaction here in real time. So any functions that you do, you can see all of the API controls and you can also input these controls directly up here or through the uh, scripting interface. So I've written this script for this webinar. You can have a script execute on start so that when the camera receives power and starts up, it will load this script immediately. So I'll just step through this script uh, very quickly to explain how it works. This first line is just setting the file naming for videos. Second is setting the same type of file naming for digital stills. Setting the lamp brightness, waiting for a second, setting the laser brightness to full. This is just an indicator. I could add a little comment here, indication that the script has started. This would be in a scenario where the user can't see uh, live video because it may be running out of battery. Then setting manual exposure and some other settings. So I'll execute this script now. So you can see it step through in real time. It's turning off the light and laser, it waits for one second, turns the laser back on, sets the exposure, sets the shutter speed. Shutter speed is in nanoseconds. Takes a still, waits for one second, takes another still, waits for another second, etc. And then down here you can see that it will set the uh, continuous rate to 4 hertz and then it'll start taking pictures. So this script, this script has finished now and I can stop taking photos. I'll add another function here that may be interesting to some people. So this was copied in from another script. So when the, you've got some when functions here, some conditional statements. So when the system date time dot minute is equal to 30, so that means it's uh, 30 minutes into the hour, and the system date time dot hour modulus two is equal to zero. So that means the every second hour, every even hour, then it's going to execute another script. So this function will execute a second script when it's done, when the, these conditions are met, and when conditions are persistent. So to remove when, you would have to type in uh, clear when. And that would remove the when persistence. So this is a script that would run every second hour, 30 minutes on the hour, set auto exposure, auto focus, turn on some ports, wait for 1500 milliseconds in this little function here, uh, set the lamp brightness, start recording for two minutes. This is in milliseconds, stop recording, set the brightness, and then onwards. I can show you a little bit of the API. This API is available online. There's a lot of functions in the API. SubC is here to help as well. This is all open source. So what are the benefits of scripting? Essentially reduced autonomous system complexity and cost. Uh, scripting allows the camera to operate independently without requiring additional computer to send commands and conduct a scheduling. In observatories, for example, there would often be a, a separate computer uh, running a Python script controlling each camera node. Normally, underwater imaging solutions also require a separate data logger for all of the other sensors on, on the node. Uh, in our case, the camera is also a NMEA data logger. To support data loggers and control servers and other components, uh, each would require their own pressure rating, pressure rated housing and cabling, uh, or they'd all be in one large housing. Uh, you can see how this would uh, increase the cost. So by removing those components, we reduce the costs and complexity and increase reliability. 
When a system has less components, uh, you would also expect it to consume less power for battery systems. So this would reduce, reducing the overall payload would improve the efficiency. And now I will give some real world examples. Subsea has worked with the University of Washington to create scripts that automatically run the camera observatory node. The scripts were used to record specific time-lapse photos and 4K video using Subsea cameras, LEDs, lasers, and a pan-tilt unit. The goal is for all of the images to have the same parameters and exact same timing, which they'll use for accurate time-lapse for scientific studies. In this video, you can see first that the camera has been underwater for a very long time. There's marine growth on the lens. Once it focuses past the growth, you can see the beautiful hydrothermal vent. There's a bit of fogging around the corners of the image. Uh, that's due to the marine growth. This vent supports a large colony of benthic creatures, and the cameras on the node turn on in intervals and record video or digital stills. These observatories have been running for years now, and I encourage you to check out their vast public repository of footage for science. In this battery-powered example, Subsea worked with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada to put together a working solution that they could lower from their research vessels. Their scripts were used to record specific time-lapse photos and 4K video using subsea camera LEDs and lasers running on a battery. Their goal was to collect data in various locations to then aid in fisheries management studies and decisions. Next scene here, you can see a few hagfish, eel-like creatures fleeing from a wolf fish. Hagfish are often the first creatures to arrive at bait. Uh, and squid is on the menu this evening. In this scene, you can see a variety of fish. There are grenadier, Atlantic hake, and coming in on the right here is a skate. You can see as the skate gets close to one of the grenadiers, tries to take a bite and misses. Most subsea projects require many components. Integration of these components can lead to high cost and complexity. At its core, scripting allows for flexible, autonomous solutions which reduce that complexity. This in turn provides enhanced return on investment in terms of both time and cost. And Subsea has a number of well-designed solutions that can be easily adapted to your requirements. If you're interested in learning more about Subsea and our solutions and how they can help your application, uh, check out our website, which has a lot of information available, or email team at subseaimaging.com, or give us a call. We are here to help. Thank you for your time.